and we'll open it up to the public forum. Is there anybody that would like to comment at this time? It doesn't look like there's anyone on from the public. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and close the public forum then and move on to the regular agenda. And item number one would be the approval of the August 11th, 2021 minutes. Everybody have a chance to look through those. Is there any amendments, subtractions, deletions, or additions? Two minutes. I'd so move. I'll second, second it. You beat me, Mike. So um, all those in favor of approval of the minutes say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it, and the August 11, 2021 minutes are approved. Uh, we'll move on to uh, number the second item, the Lux Sarah report. Steve, are you on? Yeah, I just got a message from Steve. He didn't get a link. Hmm. Okay. I, I, if you can see my screen, you can see the. Um, yeah. Uh, make oh, it the any operations bigger. graph. Yep. Can you make it any bigger? Oh, it's not, it's not big. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. Give me a second here. I'm trying to open a bunch of stuff at the same time. Uh, how's that? Oh, yeah. There you go. I think there was 762 operations. Looks like it's down um, quite a bit from, from July. Alicia, I don't know if you could maybe try and uh, get a link to Steve, but I thought he was on the original message, so. I sent him a link. Okay, all right. Thank you. Why, Tim, maybe we'll just go to the next item, which is your report and see if Steve. Yeah, I, I really, honestly, I don't have anything to report at this time, so. All right. All right. So the first we can move on. Do you yep. want to move on, Tom, to the uh, items for discussion and action? Yep, I can do okay. that. Most of the most of the items this evening are just for discussion, um, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about it as we go through the closed session. But um, we'll start with the uh, Easton Marion land use plan. I'm gonna. Can you guys see it? Yep. 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 Um, so I'm going to walk through this rather quickly and then I'll send a copy of it out. And if folks have a question, we can, if anybody wants it on the next agenda for a discussion, uh, we can do that. It's, it's, a, it's about a 16 page document. I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time on things, but I think I'll hit the points where that you guys will really you know, want to know are being identified. So um, the, the East Marion sub area plan um, is, uh, let's see. The location is uh, east of town, north of 151. Uh, in this drawing, it, I don't know if this is big enough. I hope it is, but you can see this, uh, this trapezoid down here on the lower left, this is 151. The red uh, areas identify signalization locations um, and, and full access intersections. The, the two yellow ones are the, in, in the initial phase would be uh, T intersections uh, to the north. Uh, the red represents the RPZ. And then there's these light blue lines, if you can see them on your screen, that represent the, um, the, the approach zone or the transitional zones, and then the yellow that goes out is the approach zone. 
So as we looked at this area and contemplated how the future growth of the city will go, we need to be cognizant of these, these specific areas and the zoning that, that is in place to preserve uh, those spaces for the airport when we start to land use plan this area out. Um, this, th this map here is really speaking to uh, uh, the, the location and drainage, um, uh, how, how the property really drains uh, from a stormwater perspective. Um, I would point out that generally speaking, sanitary sewer extends uh, in the area of the blue, the lowest layer area to serve the property. Uh, in this instance, that holds true. Um, so you will see this area develop um, east where the black arrows are, uh, east, or I'm sorry, west to east towards Henman. Um, and you can see that there's, there, are, there are quarter sections that start to enter into the approach zone and the transitional zones of the airport um, at, pretty quickly. So uh, this area, this pink line is the city's annexation line. Uh, these, these parcels in this vicinity here have been acquired by a development group and they are seeking to preliminary plat this property and start development uh, in the near term. So the, their desire to move into this area has uh, um, provided us the opportunity to work together to develop a land use plan that represents all the um, areas of concern and then uh, areas of, of um, opportunity moving this property forward. Um, hey, these are a question. Yeah. yeah. Just on that map, I think maybe it'll, it'll show it, but um, isn't there a, a, a parcel plus a little bit more that is a donation from uh, Dostal's estate that for uh, park related uh, space, where is that located? Uh, yes. So up here in this corner here, um, you can see some light uh, triangles. This was the Dostal farm, these two, 40, these two quarter sections. Um, there's some smaller pieces in here that have been split off. Uh, I believe this has been, this was donated to the school district. Um, one piece was donated to the water department. And then uh, I think these other two were donated to the parks department. And so there's some ownership pieces up here. They're built around a, a modified plan that was done like 10 or 15 years ago um, when he was proposing the donation. Um, what we're looking at is, you know, it's hard to develop around these pieces. So how do you, how do you work a development plan that um, is cognizant of the pieces that exist, provide an opportunity maybe to better plan the area? My guess is there'll be some land swapping that occurs. Um, all the partners are at the table right now, and that's key. Um, so the idea, and I think all the partners agree, the best case scenario is to develop maintain the amount of acreages we have, maximize the usability of the property and help the developer create a neighborhood that's beneficial to all parties. So right now we have a group of people that are all working in the same direction. We do have some property owners out here in the East End that are really afraid that when they wake up in the morning, this area is gonna be developed. Um, when we're doing this long range planning, uh, just think how long it took for this area to develop. And then look at, so we're here, we'd have to go here. So, I mean, you're, this is, this is a number of years out before we're even in, in the vicinity of this property, but being planful, we want to make sure we got a long range plan for it. So um, that's what that area is illustrating. I would point out that this is a school, proposed elementary school, and this is the approach zone. So we've got some, we got to be uh, cognizant of those issues. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. So hey, this Tom, is probably, uh, yep. Quick question. That's a signalized intersection at, at an airport. And would that be a four, a four or a full intersection then at some, some future date? Yep. Yep. Okay. And I'll, and I'll okay. uh, uh, get to that. And so you here, you can see how the land is, is being uh, uh, reserved consistent with the ALP, understanding that we have some issues in these transition zones. Um, we allow multifamily and some higher density uses in the approach zone up in, up in here. 
that we don't allow even in these transitional zones. So we've got, we've got some tweaks that need to be made to the zoning, but at this point, we're just talking about land use. Um, so you can see as we, if you look at the RPZ, the approach zones, especially that first uh, several hundred feet, uh, we're identifying low density residential warehouse are the only really two uses that can be there. And ideally it would be open space. Um, there is an absolutely no build in the RPZ. Um, and you can see there's low density office uh, on the edges of the, of the RPZ. Um, so this is just like a generally how the, the conversation was being had as they look at it at a high level. The area here that's hatched to the east is just an area that's we're not able to serve this with sanitary sewer. So we'll, while we'll show land use plan illustration out here, understand that uh, if this guy came in and wanted to develop, we would say we can't, we can't serve you with sewer and not develop. So this would require either a lift station, which the city's policy currently is that we will not have lift stations and or a, a, a trunk sewer uh, trunk line running up from the, the sanitation plant. So a long time from now. Um, so, you know, we walked through, um, you know, some just some guiding principles. We want it walkable, connected. And I, I back up a little bit. So the RDG met with all the stakeholders, uh, um, the, the, the developer, school, city, um, and, and folks uh, engaged in the whole conversation. So when they, and then they took the pieces from everybody and kind of laid it out there. This is what was kind of the result of some of the guiding principles for the development of the plan. Um, you can see, I'm not gonna walk through them all, but you can kind of see what was discussed. And ultimately what we come out with is a, uh, a conceptual plan for the area. Um, understand that this is concept, but it is, it, you know, a lot of people look at an illustration like this and say, wow, that, you know, someone just drew a bunch of lines on there. Well, this is an educated conceptual plan based on, uh, you know, design principles, walkability, neighborhood, stormwater, sanitary, water lines, transportation. There's a lot of underlying, under, a lot of underlying themes that go into developing this concept. Um, so as we can see here, uh, as John was mentioning, you got a, a major arterial that runs north south. It's not straight for a reason. Um, it, this, when you curve a street a little bit, it does provide a lessening in, in uh, speed, especially through a residential area. Uh, the pink, light pink along 100 and up across Ferno, is a commercial multifamily use uh, zone designation. Um, just indicating along there's larger arterial streets, we're gonna see more of a commercial multifamily uh, designation. The lighter yellow uh, is uh, single family uh, residential. And then you see some attached uh, single family. So you could have, whether it's townhomes, duplexes, four, four units, um, attached condos, you know, it could be a little bit of anything, but you can see that it's illustrating uh, some, some uh, a mix of uses, which is very, very important. Um, you got some, you can see where the school and park, it didn't follow the lines exactly, but they tried to proportionally identify and ensure that they were getting the same amount of property it had. So there'd be some land swapping involved. We got a trail system. We're respecting the ALP um, and the passive open space, urban agriculture opportunities uh, north of the highway and trying to keep um, uh, the uses either at a commercial level uh, in the transition zones or, or uh, you know, it does offer the opportunity for multifamily, but ideally these would be commercially uh, designated. Um, you can see stormwater is being provided. You'll also notice that we've, uh, this is a, a green and blue, greenish blue, if you would, uh, area. Um, I, I can tell you that most of the time a developer would prefer to have water um, understanding that that's really not a great option when you got it at the end of a runway. We're, we're hoping that this uh, and, and identifying that it would be a, uh, a, a basin that would operate, but be a dry basin. So it may fill up in storm events and slow release like it's required to do on a regional level, but ide ideally it will not hold water. So 
Um, we don't want to have the attractive nuisance um, for uh, wildlife at the at the foot of the runway. So, so we did get into quite a bit of detail, and I I, I think the group did a very nice job of reflecting uh, or respecting the airport, the zoning that is exists for it, and the uh, uh, the future planning that we've been doing. I I uh, just you know Jerry. Uh, is on the call tonight. He he worked with RDG. I think there was a conversation back and forth. If, if there wasn't, we had uh, coordination between the two groups. So, um, and then moving in, uh, it's just, uh, this is just talking about, it's the same illustration, just showing the commercial multifamily areas. Um, this is illustrating that area that's you know, we're gonna plan for it, but it is uh, at this point, uh, uh, service to this area is difficult. Um, and then we get into, you know, just a breakdown of, of the uses. But really, I think that the important, you know, we talk a little bit about the character, you know, you can kind of see what's trying to be created with the land use plan. Um, green, more green space, more walkable, uh, there is a much denser level of development. We're finding that um, uh, based on costs and we, we and, and, and also from a community perspective, um, we don't have an update housing needs assessment, but I can assure you affordable housing is, is it's almost to a crisis situation in the metro area. So trying to increase the density and provide the opportunity for more uh, 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 affordable housing is the op op options out here. And so um, anyway, the, the key I think for, for this group is, I mean, obviously uh, having the overall understanding that there's a plan in place, but I think what's mostly important is the idea that we are reflecting uh, the zoning for the airport as we move this forward and uh, trying to ensure that the development that comes out of this is guided uh, appropriately. So I don't know, did anybody have any questions on what I've kind of walked through? I'd be happy to answer them if you do. Has the same analysis been performed at the other end of the runway? No, um, so what we do, um, what, what we like to do is, uh, we have a general land use plan for the entire community uh, called the comprehensive plan. Uh, that's what we use as a guide for uh, zoning and development. Uh, as the name suggests, it is a general plan. It's a it's comprehensive, but it's very general. Um, when we get development interest in a specific area, um, especially if there's a potential for a large plat um, and we don't have a specified plan, we try to work towards generating that plan uh, with the development community. So a plan like this only, only takes three to four months to put together um, after you do all the public input and such get all the play parties involved. So we do it when we know an area is gonna to start to develop. Uh, the sewer that serves this area as a primer is, is, is probably the, the sewer that has the best availability for development because of the capacity. It's not limited by much capacity. It's, it doesn't have a limitation on, on the capacity. So this is a good area to develop. So we, we will contract with a planning firm to do these types of studies in those areas. So we're doing one here. We're also doing one on the corner of uh, Highway 100 and, and uh, Highway 13, the Northwest corner there, uh, north of Wanatee Park. Um, we're working with the city of Cedar Rapids currently as well on one between uh, Cedar Rapids and Marion on the Northwest side, um, C Avenue to Albernat where our two cities merge so that we can kind of grow together. You can see when we come up with a plan that looks like this and a developer comes in and says, I want to develop, there's a lot that they're going to have to respond to if they want it to be something different than this. And so we're setting the stage. We're being very planful as a city on what we need and, and desire to see in these areas. So it kind of sets the stage for development. Any other questions? This this goes to council. What stage is this in? So we, we took it to planning commission. Uh, some of the folks out here were concerned that that um, they didn't have much of a voice in the the in the planning side of this. I think there's a 
a little bit of a misunderstanding. I mean, when they were notified of the of the meeting, we held an open house. They thought they should have been in on you know at the very beginning. We literally had one meeting with more of the interested parties uh, in the immediate development area. Um, so we did back that off at Planning Commission. We didn't take it through City Council. We provided another opportunity for these folks to reach out to us and have an opportunity to, to have some conversations if they thought things should change or, or what have you. Um, but I, I, and I think they were gonna do that, but we may have canceled it because of our limitations on meetings. But the next step would be it goes to city council for a public, and we will hold a public hearing. So, and it would be adopted okay. uh, as a plan by resolution. So there's not three readings. So it'd be a, a public hearing and a resolution approving. This, uh, I don't think you need any. This looks really well done. You don't need any action from us, do you? No, I just like wanted that. to make sure that you know, as these documents and. As these documents get rolled through planning commission and such, I, I, I think uh, we, it would have been good probably to have this at last month's meeting before planning commission, just to ensure that you guys knew what was going on. So there was probably a lack of me bringing this forward, but you know, here we are. Uh, you know, I just want to make sure that you guys know that as as uh, the staff here and uh, and our group is being responsive to the needs of the airport, the planning that's being done, the ordinances that are in place. So. Um, I would, inst I, would I would guess that if we had some kind of development proposal starting to happen on the south side of the Bajorson, we would we would do something very similar to this. So So if there's no questions. I can move on to the Aircom Park preliminary plaque. Can you guys see this? Are you seeing the? Yep. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So I won't spend a lot of time on this. Uh, it, it, when the ALP was put together, this preliminary plat um, was conceptualized as a part of the ALP. Uh, the road dropping down off Marion Airport Road. Uh, the only difference is, is this, this interior jetway drive, I believe was about, was about out to here. So they extended a little further. Um, they've backed that off because of sewer serviceability issues. Um, the backside of this is really difficult to serve with sewer. So if that road went out here, the, they would create lots that would not be serviceable. So they made these lots a little bit bigger. Um, but outside of that, it, this is very consistent with what was identified in the, in the ALP. Um, so it is industrially zoned property, uh, the preliminary plats uh, moving forward. Uh, well, it's moved forward. It's been through um, city council. Uh, the, and this is, this is the reason, um, this plat's the reason. You can see this uh, easement right here for the sanitary sewer to be extended at, you know, through, through and under the runway uh, and to serve this area. Um, there's... Uh, Genesis is developing the property. They received a USDA uh, grant um, or a grant from Lynn County REC backed by the USDA. Uh, similar, uh, uh, it's not a grant, I'm sorry, it's a loan. Um, and then the city has also uh, acquired dollars through that same program to basically take the sewer from down in this area to here under the runway. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but uh, so I don't know if there's any questions. I just thought you guys would like to see this. Um, I don't know, you know, John obviously is, is well-versed in development um, and, and plats of this nature, but just <coughs> so the rest of the committee is aware. When a, the, when a preliminary plat, what's that, John? What's the large space up in the, up in the corner that's left that's going to stay uh, rural? What is that? So this is the, uh, um, it's not actually, I don't think it's included in an actual plat. Um, it was a part of the original property for the airport. So this is where Jan lives. So it was a split off. So this is the boundary of the plat. Um, this is just a real far out view of it. Okay. Yeah. 
So when a preliminary plat's developed, it sets the stage for development uh, to occur. So nothing, no lots are created. Um, all this does is establish where all your utilities are going, the street's going, um, it locks it in. Once this plat is approved, engineering is signed off on you know, really how things are gonna be served, the plan of improvements start to be developed. Um, and then when the property is final platted, so they may only come in and final plat a, a couple lots, um, you know, they have, they have sound knowledge that the final plat would be, something drastic would have to change between the preliminary and the final that would create a situation where the final plat wouldn't be approved. So it kind of sets the stage and allows the developer to proceed understanding that, you know, they're, they're preliminarily approved for making improvements. So the lot is not created until the final plat is approved. The final plat is not approved uh, until the improvements are either constructed or there's surety in place to ensure that they will be constructed. So um, if Genesis wanted to sell this lot right here, all the improvements for whatever the final plat would have to be in, or there would have to be bonding in place to ensure that they would get placed. So it's kind of our way to ensure that development occurs orderly and that all the appropriate infrastructure and facilities are, are completed uh, before they sell property. So that's a quick synopsis. Mike, I don't know if you, did I, did I cover that well enough for you? Yeah, as long as everybody else understands it. Where's yeah. the, hey, Tom, where's the east-west runway on, uh, on the su southern part of this? So this line is the, the south line of uh, Witter's property. The east, so this is, this right here is uh, Nathan Carraway's property. The, the east-west is not included on the preliminary plat. Um, because it's outside of the boundaries, yeah. they're they're just showing. This should be um, as built drawings, except for I don't the taxiway. No, is that it is showing the taxiway in there? Oh, it says future taxiway. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just assumed it was off the south end of this. Yeah, and you can see it gets into the details. You can see where the sanitary sewer runs. You know, and so you can see this area is not being served. Sewer comes in and goes down and around, um, goes south, comes across the easement. And this is where, you know, we'll tie it. We'll bring the sewer to here. The developer will bring it the rest of the way. Sewer is always the topic of conversation. It's what drives development. If you can't flush a toilet, you're not buying a lot. So, this plat's been approved and because there's funding tied to it, it, and you know, maybe Mike has heard a little bit more about, it. I haven't touched base with Jeff on this lately, but they have, they have some timeframes tied to when this property would have to be developed. So they got to start spending that money. So they're, I'm assuming, and Mike, correct me, that they're going to be start starting to build these roads within the subdivision in the very near future, probably next year. Um, I don't know that we've gotten plans yet, unless Darren's got them and just hasn't talked to me about them. Okay. I know they were looking at, so they applied for, well, let's say applied for, if, if they applied for $2 million, they only got a million. So they only got half the funding they needed to build it out. So I know they were going back and saying, can we revise our phasing of this preliminary plat based on the funding received? So there's conversations going on in background on it. But understanding that, that is why we're bringing the sewer over because they're gonna need that when they, before they start building the streets. Okay. Um, no other questions, I'll move into the aviation economic impact study. And really, I just, I just wanted to let uh, the, the group know. I, and Mike, I think, filled out the survey. But you know, we were contacted by the uh, by the state. They're preparing a, an economic, uh, a statewide aviation economic impact study. It takes about a year to get it accomplished. Um, they're working with a company uh, called JV 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 Aviation. 
aviation with a J. Um, and they're uh, going to be doing some background. And then ultimately, um, uh, they'll come out with a, an, an analysis and be able to provide what the, what the impact of the aviation facilities in the state are. Uh, this is a great document that uh, I think the last one was in 09, and it provides uh, you know, airports such as ours um, the documentation to illustrate that there is value created by airports. It provides, um, it's, it, it helps tell the story of why aviation is important and what it brings to our state and to our local communities. Um, I think Mike filled out the application and then also identified uh, Steve as probably the guy that could more particularly fill out some of the details on employment and such uh, as well. So, you know, we just kind of, we get updates, I think probably once every few months on this and uh, we'll keep the committee updated on how that rolls out. I had Steve um, do most of it. What's that? I actually had Steve do most of it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the next item is uh, the grant funding request. As you'll recall, we, we, had, uh, we had put in for two statewide grants, uh, one to bury the power lines, uh, I think on the north side of uh, 151, uh, and then uh, for, the, for the PAPI uh, project. Um, and I, I think Jane's on, I don't, I, she, uh, we, we were denied both grants. Jane did reach back out to the state, asked a few questions about, you know, what the, what what the reasoning was at behind behind that, and uh, it really seemed like um, for the power lines. And Jane, is Jane, are you on? Yeah, I'm on. Okay, I don't know if you want to summarize what you um, heard sure. back. Yeah, yeah. So I talked to Shane over at the DOT, and he said both the applications were good, and they thought they were good projects. And of course, they score them based on their different criteria. And they both scored fairly well. And he said in a normal year with normal funding, uh, at least one of the projects probably would have gotten funded, but they just didn't make the cut this year. So that was basically what he said. Okay. So... And we, you know, that's great that we, you know, we follow back up to figure out. So if something, if we know something doesn't get funded, it's good to know the reason behind it. So uh, it's great that we had good applications and they we just didn't, you know, kind of rate appropriately as they versus the funding. So we will continue to apply. Um, just a question on that. When's the next opportunity to reboot on those two projects? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Jane. Yeah. So the funding applications um, go in once a year and they're usually in the April uh, or May timeframe. So it'll be next spring before we can apply again. Okay. Thank you, Jane. And is, is there anything about that? I think it's the second paragraph from the bottom about the basic service versus general or enhanced. Uh, that's just the, the life we live in. We're stuck there forever. Yeah, so the, um, the Iowa Aviation Plan is actually being redone this year. And the last time it was done was about 10 years ago. And um, I've kind of been looking at that and it looks like they still have um, Marion as a basic service airport because to go Beyond that, you have to have a at least a 4,000 foot runway. So that's what holds Marion back from moving up a, a slot there. Just a few hundred feet short. <laughs> um, any other questions on that? So the next item, I, I don't have a slide to illustrate, but uh, we did remove the airport sign. <laughs> and uh, uh, we, will, we will start the conversation on replacing that. Um, some of it, I, I think, will 
I don't think we're going to want to spend a whole lot of money to begin with until we have an overall plan for what's what's going to happen out there. But I don't know that the existing sign was really doing the airport much judge, justice in its state. So did not look very professional. I guess I guess my I have a question on that. So why did they leave the frame? Because it actually looks worse now. Oh, are you kidding me? I haven't been out to look at it. They just took it out. Yeah, of the they frame. just took the sign and then they left the front, the frame and the posts. Um, it 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 really does look worse. So, all right, good to know. Yeah. So we'll so, uh, yeah, FYI, there, Tom. No, thank you. I I did not go out. And I figured when they said they took the sign down, <laughs> that it was down. Okay. All right, well, we'll uh, Mike and I will go out and back over it with his truck, not mine. Um, the next item, uh, well, I guess I should, I should say that when you, we'll, we'll get that removed, but and we'll kind of bring back a conversation on the sign based on you know, some of the responses to how we proceed with the uh, uh, response to the land donation proposal, I guess is probably a good way to button that up. Um, the next item, Mike, I don't know if you want to talk briefly about that. I know you've mentioned it in the past, but. Yeah, so the sanitary sewer extension project, uh, Rachi is our low bid on that. Uh, the contracts just got approved by city council at the last meeting. So we'll be setting up a pre-con with them um, to get an actual construction schedule. So it's 40 working days and then there's seven calendar days of airport closure where PNN and uh, Luxair will be paid for that time. And then there's an incentive, basically, if they can do it less than seven days, the contractor gets the incentive. If they go over those seven days, then they pay the penalty um, over those seven days. And then at the same time, there's some wetland mitigation, basically some drainage area that um, they feel was cut off when we did the runway improvement. And so Rachi is actually on contract to do that at the same time when we shut down the runway to try and get some water to drain back into the wetland that's kind of dried out a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. So those will just happen at the same time um, so that we have to close the runway down once. So. Um, Mike, I don't know. Do you know... Um... With that, do you know if there's been a time set aside for the overlay of, of Airport Road? So we've also had, yeah, I guess we can talk about that too. So there's the, both the plans to extend Enterprise Drive that ends right there um, to extend that and then also to overlay Marion Airport Road. Um, I think Rachi might be the contractor on that as well. Um, Anderson yeah. Bogart's doing the inspection and administration on that. I, I think they were supposed to have already started, but I don't know if they've actually started yet on that project. Yeah, and they're going to take this down to the other side of this intersection. So um, it'll be hard surfaced all the way to the north-south road. So if in the future we have access off airport road or aircom um, to the airport, there's going to be hard surface. So there's no more seal code and gravel and such so just i think that's going to be that's also going to clean you know just how that area operates and looks out there if you've driven down seacrest road east of uh 13 that's what it'll be like on marion airport road so it's a a mill and overlay project so it won't be a complete reconstruction with concrete but it'll be much better than the condition is today Uh, I have one question on this map. Yep. Uh, what happened to the access between Culver's and the uh, church there? There had been some plans uh, to connect uh, north yep. to south there, and uh, I hadn't heard any more on that. So that that is a part of the ALP. Um, okay. so that will be, that'll be driven by the city's capital improvement plan. Um, uh, so if, you know, that, this is, that extension was contemplated 
as this property was developed. Um, I think this access point is similar to that of the ALP. So, uh, you know, that that conversation would occur, I think, at the time we would start talking about uh, extending the airport runway uh, to the north um, to go to the 4,000 feet. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's just a capital improvement. It's a part of the ALP's capital improvement plan. It is not in the city's five-year plan. Okay, thanks, Tom. Yep. If there's no other questions, this is gonna be the fun part. Um, we're gonna to need to move this meeting to the other Zoom link. Did everybody receive the second Zoom link? Mm, yes. Okay, so we'll need to move the yes. meeting. Yes. Okay. So we'll need to move the meeting to the second Zoom link. So we'll close this one. And yeah. Is hey, that Tom? right, Kara? Yes, Grant. I was going to say, I think we need a motion to do this. We do. We need a motion. And then you also need me to um, give my statement. Mm. Uh, if I could jump in real quick for a sec um, and quickly give a deluxe air oh. update. Um, sure. there, there isn't too much to it. Um, the operations were down a bit from last month, probably because it was so warm. Um, <laughs> But also, I mean, our fuel sales were almost exactly on par for the previous month. So it seems like the activity didn't actually slow down too much. So I don't know what the, um, the, the difference was there. We're still working on getting the uh, derecio damaged hangers up. Uh, just keep getting hung up on, on contractors. It's hard to, to get them scheduled, uh, especially when some of them get COVID. Um, but we're still making progress on it. Just got the electrical done. Um, so moving forward on that. And uh, also just want to mention that uh, Dave Lammers did organize a 9-11 uh, commemoration. Um, and we had about a dozen planes come out and do a little fly over the, the runway uh, for the first responders and uh, veterans. And we had um, I think most of the, the fire department came out and we had a, a few other vets and uh, it was a pretty nice showing and uh, he's looking to do it again next year. So hopefully it'll just uh, cool. keep growing. Awesome. Very cool. And that's all I had for you. So you guys can, I guess, vote to, to move on. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. So if somebody wanted to make the motion on you, the agenda. You still need to have motion to, yeah. what, what okay. is it, to adjourn into a uh, closed, closed session. session? Yes. Okay, I, I'll so move. I'll second. And then we actually need a roll call vote for this. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I can do it. Mr. Goldberg? Aye. Mr. Stokes? Ms. Roth? Aye. Mr. Raritan? Mr. Legate? Mr. Bender? Yes. Mr. Shaper? Yes. Yes, on Phil Legate. Yeah, and I said yes, I just couldn't get to my space bar. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone, Alicia. Okay, then um, I would make my statement, which is that um, I've reviewed the proposed subject matter for the closed session and find the same to be appropriate under Iowa code section 21.51J. Okay, so I'm gonna end this meeting and we all need to join the other link that I sent out via email. Perfect. Okay. Okay.